All right. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I'm here to talk to you about media and why it's something that you should consider when you're thinking about putting yourself out there in a bigger way. I'm hoping to get you past that mindset of like, you know, you're probably somewhere in between, that should be me, when you see someone out there with a similar message or you're on the other end of the spectrum like, oh, I have absolutely nothing to say and there's no reason for me to be putting myself out there at all. We're gonna bridge all of those gaps and I don't even have the clicker in my hand, not that I, I don't think it even works, but, um, but I'm, oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I wanna start out with a question. Do you consider yourself a rule follower when it comes to your blog or business? Do you, I, I welcome interaction and show of hands, but I wanna clarify what I'm considering a rule follower. I think so many of us, when we venture into this entrepreneurial, um, this entrepreneurial game, we get so focused on all of the things that we should do that we get pigeonholed and stuck trying to do everything right and follow all the rules that we miss a ton of opportunities. So does that resonate with you? Are you do you find yourself trying to do everything right? I have a kind of a funny story and an icebreaker anecdote about what a consummate rule follower I am in an embarrassingly evident way, which I will tell you now. It has to do with um, being in Spain in 1999, and if any of you were in Europe in the late 90s, you know that when you went and tried to get on the metro, you may have noticed that like paying for said metro ride was optional. Like people were jumping the turnstile, you just could go, you know, it seemed inconsequential. Being the rule follower that I am, I did indeed buy my ticket and I went through the turnstile and promptly threw my ticket away, got on the train, and I thought that that was the gig. Like, Fine, I did, I did what I was supposed to do. The first time in the entire decade of the 90s that a ticket checker came onto the train <laughs> was that day. <laughs> and he pulled me, not physically, but motioned for me to exit the train when I could not produce my ticket. And I got off the train and I'm shaking and sweating and wobbly and I am trying to explain to him in my broken Spanish, I had been there for six months, yet I could not summon the words. All I could think of was, I threw it, I threw it. <laughs> and he pulls out his, his you know, citation thingy and writes me a ticket and me not real, you know, in my panic, I did not realize I was leaving the country in two weeks. I could easily just like, thank you, I'm so sorry, and take the ticket and, Exit the, con exit the train station, exit the country, never to be heard from again. Instead, the rule follower, the make it right, it, you know, immediately kind of person that I was, pulled out my wallet and was like, I'll just pay the ticket right now. And I gave him money and he put it in his pocket and left. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, oh my God, our solve, problem solved, okay, fine. And I realized after I got out of the train and met my friends, I w this like cold chill went down my spine and I was like, not only did I not follow the rule, I like broke the law. <laughs> I just paid off a Spanish transit cop. <laughs> And so we can have the best of intentions when we think we're following the rules, but it ends up, we end up stifling ourselves and probably, you know, not, not doing the right thing and shooting ourselves in the foot. So that's the moral of the story. Next slide. So we think we are rule breakers because we are doing kind of an unconventional thing, um, but we are not necessarily breaking the rules because we want to do everything right. And what I'm here to help you with today is to help you smash the rule book. So what are the rules that some of you hold for how publicity happens for a business or a blog? Do you think that you need to hire a publicist who has all of the media contacts and all of the right connections? Is that something that you think? Maybe. 
Do you think you need to have all of the right connections yourself and the right pedigree and have publicity foisted upon you? Yes, no, maybe? No? <laughs> Do you think you need to have a sensational story? Yes, something that's mind-blowing. These are the rules we're going to break. Um, I'm going to tell you first about a little bit more about me now that you can visualize me paying off the transit cop. I'll tell you a little bit more about my credentials and why I actually um, deign to be up here telling you about this. I went to school for journalism and I studied abroad in Madrid and then I found myself in celebrity publicity early in my career. And this is a picture of me with two recognizable fellows, Big Bird and Al Roker. <laughs> And we were, that is me at the ripe old age of like 23. <laughs> um, we were, the company that I worked for was in charge of getting publicity for celebrities and television personalities who had new projects. So these two were uh, collaborating, a collaboration between this, uh, the Weather Channel and Sesame Street to teach kids about extreme weather. And we did what were, what would kind of commonly be known as press junkets for all of these celebrities that were doing special projects. Um, so we were in charge of getting them television and radio interviews to promote these specials. And this was like easy PR because who doesn't want to talk to Big Bird and Al Roker? Like it was very exciting and people generally, the media contacts were pretty enthusiastic when we were reaching out. Um, then my career transitioned inevitably and I moved into the more traditional agency world where I was working with brands like, um, like every consumer product you could imagine, financial firms, healthcare, pharmaceuticals, and some nonprofits. And while I was in that phase of helping the loudest people in the room be louder than their competition, my soul started to die. <laughs> And I realized I needed to find a new way to purvey my skill set. And Marie, wherever Marie is, mentioned that she got laid off on a Friday the 13th, as did I, <laughs> January 13th, uh, 2012. And I knew that I was not going to go and find another job just like the one that had been sort of killing me from the inside out. So I realized that I had a skill set that would be useful to people, and this is a theme that we're going to come back to and something that I want you to really ruminate on, is the thing that I got good at over those 12 years in corporate where I was in charge of creating stories that people didn't really care about, didn't really want to hear, like the new FDA approval on that vaccine. I mean, that is a little bit important, <laughs> but, but like the new fibromyalgia drug or the new hungry man pancake breakfast or whatever, like creating a, my job was to create stories that people would be interested in in the traditional media when they realize that this is like a consumer product that they, you know, like who really cares? But that is a unique skill that I had cultivated over that period of time, and it came easily to me. And so what, I'm, what I want you to think about is the fact that what comes easily to you, what's mundane to you, is actually something that is not easy for everybody. It's not, it's not their nature. It's something that could be mind-blowing to someone new to the conversation. And so that's really where my business was born. And I needed to figure this out very quickly because I have a six-year-old daughter for whom I am the provider. So shout out to all the mama breadwinners out there who are charting their own path. This is so important that I do something that is um, aligned for me, is not killing my soul, but also is, is, you know, is supporting our family. So next slide. The turning point for me came when I was kind of nascent in my business and I had one of those, that should be me, moments when I heard two of my local entrepreneurial friends featured on Entrepreneur on Fire, a really influential podcast. And I kind of lamented to a friend of mine, like, oh, how come I, I, should, I, could do, I could be on that show? And she was like, well, did you pitch yourself? And I was like, 
no. And it was that reaction, like, I'm not big enough. I don't have anything to say yet. I, who cares what I have to say? But I also, that's what I want. I, you know, it was like this simultaneous sort of, I'm not big enough, but I really want that. And so, you know, sometimes it just takes that outside, you know, tap on the shoulder for you to finally take action. And so I pitched myself and I got a yes, and it was absolutely a 180 for my business in terms of visibility and in terms of validation that this works and that media, whether it's a podcast or any kind of media out there, television, radio, magazines, they want to hear from us and they need us. They need content, they need ideas, and they need reliable contributors who they can trust and create relationships with that pay off over time. So here's what we're going to create today. I want to help you find confidence in identifying the right media that's going to elicit the right result in your business to increase your influence and impact. I want to help you find clarity in the story you have to tell and all the things that you can say out there. And finally, I want to help you strengthen your media mindset. So let's start with um, the notion that this is actually just one piece of the visibility puzzle. With my clients, media is really kind of like the sexy thing that's exciting and, you know, who doesn't... I, it's kind of, it's again, that double-edged sword, but like who doesn't want to be, to like see their name in print or see themselves photographed in the pages of a magazine? Media is just one piece of this though. There are three ways in my framework to be visible. Collaborations and alliances are another way, meaning you find other people who are talking to your audience and you align and, and forge a collaboration with them and speaking and events. So sometimes you're on a stage and sometimes you create a stage. And these are also really viable, powerful ways to connect with more and larger and new audiences. Next. So what can media do for your blog? Media can, some of these may be obvious, some of them less obvious, but I want you to start to open your mind to the possibility that media can be something really exciting and productive for you to engage in. Media can increase readership. It can lead to leadership opportunities. It can increase your influence. It can give you expert status. It can help you earn sponsorships. It can, and it can also position you as a spokesperson. So in some cases, you, if you're out there creating relationships with media, which is always my goal for my clients, is that they're creating their own relationships because they're out there pitching themselves with my guidance. When you create those relationships, how valuable would it be for a brand partner to see that you have relationships with the media? And that could be something that you could weave in to a package that you might offer them as a sponsor of your blog. So um, again, just food for thought. Okay, so let's talk about to which media you can confidently contribute. In order to do this, what we wanna do is identify your media outreach goals because that's how you're gonna back into the right strategy. You have to know where you're going. There's you know, an adage in the, in the self-improvement world, begin with the end in mind. It's actually really practical because how are you gonna chart a path if you don't know where you're going? So I'm going to talk you through identifying what your media outreach goals are, and then we're gonna get clear on the kinds of stories that work in each kind of media. All right, so here are some examples of media outreach goals. So you might wanna jot down one that resonates with you or come up with one that sort of is inspired by this list. So, um, your outreach goals, increase readership or get more known, leverage media exposure and influence to earn sponsorships or increase revenue, increase the impact of your point of view or the paradigm you wanna shift. And I think that's really something to think about and a fundamental of visibility is what is your point of view? What are you uniquely all about? And how are you doing things differently? How are you flying in the face of conventional wisdom when you approach the, the concepts that you approach? How are you, um, how are you identifying and making yourself unique? 
um, become a recognized expert in your space or sell a service or product. So does, do those goals resonate with you? Are you able to sort of glean something from those? Okay, thanks. All right. Um, okay, so jot down anything that comes to mind. I'd love for you to have like an end in mind, or at least maybe if you, you know, if you're not clear on exactly what your goal would be, just jot down what resonated with you. All right, so now I have a little chart of sorts. You could take a picture of this if you want. Um, this is this is my take on which media can help you reach which goal. So the teal color is representative of like a yes, that will, those go together. The darker greenish color is a not so much. So um, when, if you wanna become more known, all media is good for that. If you want to earn sponsorships, the idea being that any kind of visibility, any kind of media really gives you credibility. When someone comes back to your site and they, sit, they see that you know, copious collection of media logos and they're like, yeah, this person is on it. Um, all media is good for those. If you want to increase the impact of your point of view or shift a paradigm, Mainstream media is really excellent for that. Magazines and newspapers and television because they are really the trend casters. They are the ones that are looking for those big ideas and particularly, again, if your idea, if your point of view flies in the face of conventional wisdom, if you're going to be, if you can be super contrary in a way that makes sense, then that is, then you're a paradigm shifter. And, uh, and, that, and those kind of media, those mainstream media are good for you. If your goal is to attract new clients, the idea is that you want to be uh, in media that is super niche down. So those are online print media and those are podcasts and radio. They give you an opportunity to dive a little bit deeper with your audience and connect with a niche that's going to invest in what you have to offer. And if you wanna sell a service program or product, it depends on what you are going to be selling. Um, mainstream media is good for um, a lower price product. Like if you have a book or something like that you're, that you're launching, those are excellent media for that. For a higher price product, something that requires significant investment, you actually need to put that investment in with your time and with your vulnerability and with your presence. So those niche media like podcasts and radio that give you an opportunity to connect, connect more deeply with the audience are good for that. Does that make sense? All right. All right, so let's talk about ideas. This is one of the big questions that always comes up is you know what what am i supposed to say so the kinds of ideas that work in different types of media are this television really is looking for cutting edge mass market trend based ideas like i said those those convention busters right the ones that are really going to kind of tweak people like get, maybe get their their um get their back up a little bit or, or provide some controversy. Something that is attached to something that is relevant and happening right now, but also maybe a little bit con uh, controversial or, um, or introducing a new trend. Online media is looking for, online media, as you know, moves very quickly. They're looking for things that are relevant, that are timely, that are niche down, and that are specific in their theme. Radio and podcasts are great for those deeper dives. I, this is my, I'm gonna say this probably five more times in this talk, radio and podcast is my favorite media. And it's because you get to give so much of yourself. You get to talk about your journey, you get to have, it's just a longer format. So you get to really dive in and, and be, you know, kind of, present with that audience. So they're interested in profiles and deeper dive interviews. If you're looking for local radio, if you're looking at local radio, they're interested in like local statistics or local trends, obviously. So um, yeah, so don't, uh, don't write off all of that traditional media that you maybe don't think anyone's paying attention to. It's actually really, really relevant. Um, features. Features are awesome because you don't have to write them yourself. <laughs> 
you get to be the subject of a feature, which, which I think is actually not only is it not, you know, the way I said it to begin with indicates I think it's less work, but I actually think it gives you more, more um, gravitas, more credibility, because someone has chosen you to be the subject of a magazine feature. So they are looking for people who are really, um, again, flying in the face of the norm, doing something unique and interesting, and are worthy of a profile. OK, now we can go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that was a signal for me to move it along, right? <laughs> All right. So. Let's talk about what opportunities are available to you, and I'm going to give you a ton of examples that are super fun. So um, the opportunities that are available to us are television news, online media, radio and podcasts, and magazines and newspapers. And so we're going to start with television news. All right, so um, you're going to look on your local television. So yes, like n you can't say anymore, like I don't watch TV. I don't even have a TV. Like you can find TV anywhere. This is from YouTube. This um, clip that I screenshot is from YouTube. You have to um, consume the media that you want to appear on. So this is a, a segment that runs on the local Detroit ABC affiliate called Mom's a Genius. And this is a woman, Maria Dismondi, who is a self-published chil children's book author who also coaches other people and, and helps produce their children's books. So she pitched herself to be on uh, her local Detroit television station, and they did a little interview with her. Another option for local television, and this is a hyper-local, this example is super hyper-local because we live in the... I live in the New York City market, which is incredibly competitive. This is one of my friends who pitched herself and her local mom entrepreneur group to the News 12 in New Jersey. And the, the reporter actually came to her house and did a, a shoot, did a segment with her and her mom entrepreneur friends. And I think that's an amazing like rule breaking moment because like who would think, or it takes a little bit of um, in, in, innovative thinking to imagine that a reporter would want to come to your house and like do a package on you and your friends meeting around your dining room table. But it is interesting to someone who has never thought about that before, never thought about a group of moms coming together and supporting each other to grow their businesses and meeting in as a, a simple a place as a dining room table in Milburn, New Jersey. So food for thought. All right, online magazines. This is um, this is Melina Palmer. She's a client of mine who hosts the podcast called The Brainy Business, and she also ha has a blog of the same name. She is a voice in the field of behavioral economics, which has very few female voices. I've come to learn. Melina came to me because she wanted to build her platform to propose a traditionally published book. And we knew that we needed to get her byline article. She needed to be out there as a voice and as a writer. So, so we worked on the um, application to be a contributor to Inc., which required like providing 30 headlines of articles you might write for Inc. if you got the opportunity. And she got the opportunity. And this is um, an amazing opportunity if you're seeking to build build your platform and increase your credibility is being seen as a contributor in mainstream online media. Another example of this is our friend Jamie Lieberman, who is speaking right after me, <laughs> and she is back there. Um, Jamie is an, is an attorney, the founder of Hashtag Legal, and this was such an exciting get for us because this has nothing to do with Jamie like getting more clients or making more money. This is Jamie's big change the world idea. And it's so important that we be out there with those paradigm shifting ideas so that we feel fully expressed, but also so that the, the the tide starts to turn. This really does affect change. And I know Jamie talks about how this piece really paved the way for other big idea articles for her to contribute as well. 
So think about what your big like stake in the ground paradigm shifting idea is because that point of view will help you get more media coverage as well. Okay, so podcasts and radios, again, my, my favorite medium. So this is actually an example of traditional terrestrial AM radio. So exciting. So this is a, um, a style blogger in the Chicago area called, uh, her name is Danny Levine. She writes about the femme perspective in the LGBTQ community. And she found this radio show called Out Chicago, which focuses on voices from that community. And she pitched herself to do an interview. It helped that she was named the, the best fashion blogger in like 2017 in Chicago, like across the board. So those are also the kinds of credentials you wanna remember when you're putting together your media bio which is something um, that you should also think about. It's a, like a three-line bio. I have, on my website, I have a, resource, a free resource that you can grab to write your media bio. Um, and if you write your media bio and you want me to look at it, I love, I love that sort of thing. So um, think about what um, awards you've won, other press credentials you might have. Those are the kinds of things that should go in your media bio. If you're best, best uh, style blogger in Chicago, that should go in your media bio. And then this um, podcast uh, example is another client of mine, Karen Wilson, who founded this platform called Child Nexus. Karen Wilson is a world changer. She is a child neuropsychologist who helps families assess children with learning, learning differences and get them the interventions that they need. And she founded this platform, Child Nexus, that connects people uh, people with children with learning differences with the professionals that they need and she is intent on getting the word out that children are deserving of and families are deserving of this intervention and in some cases the schools and and communities and um, yeah well schools I guess are mandated to provide it so um, she's been out there talking to all different um, platforms that speak to families at every stage of life about children with learning differences. So the Scholarship Shark was one podcast um, for college-age children, and Learn Smarter was for more school-age children. Okay, next. Two more examples. All right, so features. So, um, oh, I brought a visual aid for this one, too. Um, you may have seen this if you're staying in this hotel, this magazine, in your room. Every city has a magazine like this. Your city has a magazine like this. It's a beautiful magazine. It's beautifully produced, beautiful photography, and the stories are about people from here <laughs> or from wherever you are. This is a great resource for you. One of these stories is about a local person who put on a play that was um, highlighting the AIDS crisis in a particular time period in Texas. Like, people who are doing interesting things in their region are featured in magazines like this. This is accessible to you. So um, I have two, two other examples of this. Um, one is a local Easton, Lehigh Valley, Easton, PA, um, business owner, her name is Vanessa Unvarsky. She's an Air Force veteran. She created a um, nail polish that is entirely vegan and cruelty free and, and all of this, and you can customize it. So you can go to her studio and create your own color. Or if it's uh, for your business and you want to create some swag, you can go and she can create a color for you. She has been featured everywhere in her local media. It is absolutely amazing. She has a great story, and you have a great story too. We need to unearth your story. That's the, that's the point here. And then this last one is one of my favorites as well. This is my mother. <laughs> she was like, for a while, she was saying to me, I really wanna be in this magazine. And I was like, actually, you should be in that magazine. So, um, we pitched her. She, has, uh, she should be in that magazine because she has had a local fitness business, a fitness franchise, for 30 years in an industry that is notoriously fickle and trendy. To have a long-standing fitness business in the town we grew up in where she sent her kids to public school is like a real accomplishment. And so once I got on board with all of that, 
I was able to pitch her and we got her this feature. And another like rule breaking moment, if you ever think it's like uncomfortable or weird to pitch yourself, think about pitching your mom. <laughs> that was like a little bit of a weird scenario, but I got over it and we made it happen, which was amazing. Okay, so the two types of pitches that you need, your profile pitch and your how-to pitch. So let's talk about your profile pitch. So I'm gonna give you a structure for writing your profile pitch that will resonate with you because it is how we have shared stories since the dawn of being humans and it is a three act narrative. So you can talk about if you're gonna frame your profile, talk about where you were before, what was that epiphany, that catalyzing moment that changed everything for you when you realized that something needed to change or you needed to do something differently or you realized that you could offer this to your audience? What was that epiphany moment? And then how did it get you to where you are now? How did it create your after? That is a simple structure you can employ to create your profile pitch. Next. Your how-to pitch. You guys have so much how-to content that you can draw on and repurpose for media to create how-to articles, interviews, segment ideas for television, you name it. Draw on the content that you've already created and think about this question. When you look at where you might place that content, think about what can I teach this audience? What does this audience need to learn from me? And that way you can tailor whatever it is that you might have created before to a new audience, to a media audience. Does that make sense? Awesome. Okay, so you can get a template for this pitch along with there's an opportunity there to also get on my calendar at amandaberlin.com slash welcome. You can download a template for free on there. I hope you do it. Okay, so a note about audiences. So when we are writing, we are told and you know, creating our blogs, we're told like you need to be writing to a very specific person. I'm here to tell you that what we've been taught about niching down in business and blogging is all wrong when it comes to media. The way we're gonna do it differently is we're going to look at it as kind of a Venn diagram of sorts. So you can speak to your ideal client, I think, or your ideal reader. I think that's very valuable and super important. But when you're thinking about where you can be seen in the media, think about all the different audiences or demographics that are relevant to you, that might be interested in what you're talking about, or even that you're a part of. So you may be part of a local um, you know, sports community, or you might be part of a parenting community, or you might be part of a religious community, or you might be part of, um, I, don't, I, I don't know, a, a school alumni association. All of these different kind of verticals are all verticals that you can adapt your message for in order to be more visible. And you rest rest um, faithfully in the knowledge that your ideal reader is in there somewhere. It may not be an entire audience of just your ideal reader, but they are there and it actually distinguishes you because when you're, when you're only speaking to your ideal audience, you're one of a thousand different voices that are tailoring your message to them. When you reach outside of that ideal audience and look at these different demographics that you can speak to, you become the single voice that's talking about what you're talking about to that audience. Does that make sense? A little bit? Okay, hopefully I have time for questions. <laughs> Next. Okay, this is the last piece of my talk and one of my most favorite things is to talk about mindset. So there are three essentials when you are thinking about putting yourself out there. These are your stake in the ground, rule breaker media mantras. There are three things that you need to remember. The first thing is about your, next, yourself, sorry. Remember that you have been doing this for a long time. You know your stuff. 
So I want you to adapt some of these mantras into something that you might say to yourself when you get sort of freaked out about putting yourself out there. I have something that's gonna be helpful to someone out there. The thing that, that I said in the beginning, that very basic thing that you have um, that, that you've been writing about forever is mind-blowing to someone who's never heard it before, mind-blowing to someone new to the conversation. Remind yourself that you've studied and trained for this. You've put in your 10,000 hours. And again, some, some of the simplest details of my work could be mind-blowing for someone new to the conversation. What do you need to remember about the decision-maker? This is one of my most favorite things. They need you. They need people who are going to approach them with great ideas, who are going to be contributors of value, and who are going to show up and do what they said they're going to do, who are going to be people of integrity. You are there. If you fit that category, you are their most valuable asset, and they need you. They're searching for good lead sources and story ideas. They need us. This is their job to find people like us to contribute and to provide value to their audiences. There is nothing better for a journalist, a producer, a podcaster to bring someone in, do an interview with them, publish an article, and look really good to that consumer audience that they just put that in front of. There's nothing better. And even for the producers who are lining up guests that the anchor needs to interview, that person's job is on the line. <laughs> if, if they put a talent up there with their anchor and it, it's a blowout and, they, and, it, <laughs> and it goes off the rails on air, that is a horrible situation. They need people who are normal, who are awesome, and who provide great material. Okay. Next. And finally, what do you need to remember about your audience? There are people out there who are searching for solutions that only you can provide. And they might be in pain. They might be in some level of pain. They might be frustrated. They might have had it up to here with all the bad information they get online. And they are looking for someone who can give them something great. They deserve to hear from you. So, the idea is that it's uncomfortable, right, to put ourselves out there. And I think that all of us would agree that that, un that discomfort is worth it if it means you're going to reach someone who will be moved by what you have to, sh what you have to say. Is that right? You're willing to be a little bit uncomfortable if that's the result. Yes? No? OK. <laughs> So we would agree that they, your audience, they deserve to hear from you, and you might be the answer to their prayers. Next, please. So I'll ask you to sort of ruminate on that and maybe write down a couple of things that you want to remember for yourself that, that are going to help you put yourself out there. So now I'm going to come back to that question about the rule book. Are you ready to smash the rules? Are you ready to take a stand for your brand and be willing to be a little bit uncomfortable if it means the people who need you will find you? Are you ready to do this your way and get rid of all those shoulds so that you can put yourself out there in a way that feels authentic? Are you willing to remind yourself that your story matters and that it could be the key that unlocks someone else's prison? And are you ready to remind yourself as well that the world needs our voices right now. That the fact that we are willing to put ourselves out there is actually the antidote to all of the negativity that we see out there and the vitriol that's in the media right now. And people like us with, with passionate, positive messages raise our voices and put ourselves out there, it drowns out all of that negativity. And that's a true stake in the ground mission of mine. So I hope that I've inspired you to reach out there and to go from a rule breaker to a turnstile jumping revolutionary. <laughs> Thank you.